to the church members that are here as well so that we may pay honor and tribute to a life well lived and the legacy that she has certainly left behind in the hearts and in the minds of her family and friends. Job 19, verse 25 and 26 says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? Let us pray. Almighty God, we come this morning, first of all, acknowledging who you are in our lives. We acknowledge, O oh God, that if it had not been for you, where would we be? We acknowledge the fact that, God, you are a living and eternal God that creates all things and knows all things, and everything is under your will. And so, God, we come in the service of celebration as we memorialize Sister Fanny McFay. We thank you, God, because you allowed her to be upon this earth for nearly 89 years. God, we thank you for each year that she was able to show love to her family. And then that family were able to reciprocate the love back to her. We thank you, God, for the experiences. We thank you, God, for her legacy that is now with each and every family member. We thank you, God, because you said in all things to give thanks. So we thank you for good times. We thank you for challenging moments in our lives. We thank you for happy moments, and even in those moments where we feel sad and in sorrow or in mourning. Lord, turn our mourning into rejoicing as we remember her life. We thank you and we praise you. We ask in this moment as we share together that the words that are uttered, O oh Lord, that it would rest on the hearts and minds of your people. And those share stories and reflections Sister McVeigh, that it pricks the memory of those that are present and viewing. And then when we share over your word, that you'll bless thy word that would go to comfort those that need comforting. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our hands together and give the Lord the praise for her life. And As we take these moments and as we share together in this, uh, this place, this sacred place, as we remember and as we share and as we celebrate and as we thank God for certainly her life. I'm, I'm going to, as we move forward in our printed um, worship service, uh, we have a congregational hymn what a friend we have in Jesus. And after we sing that hymn together, uh, we have scripture readings, and I don't believe there's anyone that has been assigned to scripture readings. So if not, then I'll ask our youth pastor, um, Pastor William Curran, who's new to our, um, our membership here, our church, and our ministerial staff. And then I would ask him to come to read Psalms 121 and Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 4 through 8, which has been selected by uh, the family. And then followed by him, we'll have our acknowledgments and our condolences read by uh, Sister Rosie Washington, and then we'll move from there. <laughs>
Our scripture readings for the Old Testament will be reading from Psalms 21, the New King James Version. And it reads, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Again, that was Psalms 121. 
Next in our New Testament reading will be Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 4 and concluding verse 8. And it reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are of good report, praiseworthy, there, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading hearers and doers of his holy word. Amen. What an appropriate hymn to be sung. What a friend we have in Jesus. And I will start by saying what a wonderful friend it was to have Fanny and her beautiful smile who would truly be missed by those of us here at St. Timothy. And I applaud her also for the work that she did with the Women's Fellowship uh, as we worked together. Uh, and with that, I will share condolences that have been sent. First, from the mayor of our city. Dear family members, as mayor of the city of Gary, I wish to express my heartfelt condolences on the passing of Fannie McVeigh. I pray that God gives you and your family the strength, perseverance, and the courage to endure the pain and sorrow of coping with the death of a loved one. Fannie has left a great legacy. My prayer is that you keep your heads up and your hand in the master's hand. Our God is truly able to see you through. Sincerely, Jerome A. Prince, Mayor, City of Gary. From the Urban League of Northwest Indiana. On behalf of the Urban League of Northwest Indiana, it is with sincere sympathy that we extend our condolences to the entire family at the passing of your loved one. During this final tribute of love, know that we are sending thoughtful prayers of encouragement to the family and friends. We lift you up and wrap our arms around you, hoping these words of comfort will strengthen your heart. On behalf of the Board of Directors and the Urban League staff, know that we are here to provide you with continued support during this time of bereavement. Dr. Vanessa Allen McLeod, President and CEO of the, uh, I'm sorry, of the Urban League. Northwest, and once again, as I read these condolences, if they're representatives, feel free to stand as they are read. Northwest Indiana Black Nurses Association, to the family of Fannie McVeigh, we as nurses are deeply saddened to hear of your loss. We are sad and our hearts are heavy. As we think of your grief, please know that we share your pain, for most of us have been there before. As nurses, we are considered to be God's angels on earth, soothing, comforting, and nurturing the sick. We as nurses also believe that we demonstrate God's love as we carry out our duties. Your love, one, has pleased God. At times like this, we are all helpless. It is God and only God who can speak words that calm our hearts. 
as he calmed the seas, still the winds, and eased our pain. So lean on him, and you will never walk alone. May you find comfort in the memories that are yours and cherish them forever. We are proud to have worked in her profession. Mona Steele, RN, President of Northwest Indiana Black Nurses Association. From the Women's Fellowship of St. Timothy Community Church, and as I said initially, uh, Fanny was a very diligent uh, worker in the Women's Fellowship. God, in his infinite wisdom, has seen fit to move from our midst, our beloved sister, Fanny McVeigh, on April 18th, 2021. We, the members of the St. Timothy Community Church Women's Fellowship, want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we gather to be at a Christian and valiant woman goodbye. Sister Meg Fay was a faithful and devoted member of St. Timothy Community Church. Whereas the passing of our beloved sister is the will of God and there is a human tie that has been broken which bleeds the hearts in agony and pain. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of Jesus who said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Whereas the words of Jesus in John 14, let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond. We cannot replace Sister McVeigh, but we will attempt to demonstrate her love. To the family, we know your loss is deep. Your sorrow is great. However, we want you to know that we share your sorrow, but more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. Humbly submitted on this 15th day of May, 2021. From the August birthday group, To the family of Brother Michael McVeigh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, this is from the August birthday group. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that so whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. May it ease your sorrow to know that you are in the thoughts and hearts of others during this difficult time. To God be the glory. God loves you and so do we. Sincerely, the August birthday group, Herbert Dunaway president, Reverend Dr. Ramin Jackson pastor, senior pastor, Reverend William Curran youth pastor. The resolution from the Sunday School, I understand uh, a representative from the Sunday School Department would like to come and do this resolution. You may come at this time. So did I get the wrong message?
representative from St. Timothy Community Church Sunday School, please stand. Resolution of love for Sister Fannie McVeigh. God, in his infinite wisdom, has seen fit to remove from our beloved, from our beloved Sister Fannie McVeigh on April 18th, 2021. We are in this world for a limited time, and with the breath of the infant begins the race to the grave, a race everyone must run. Whereas the Sunday School Department of St. Timothy Community Church wants the family to know that our hearts are full as we gather to say goodbye to Sister Fannie McVeigh and members and friends. Whereas in the providence of God, who has brought to a close the life of Sister McVeigh, we, the Sunday School Department, feel that it is befitting to commend you to him who knows best and will always do right. Sister McVeigh demonstrated a great faith in Jesus Christ through her study of the Bible and faithful attendance at Sunday school. Therefore, be it resolved that we know the deep loss and sorrow that your family is experiencing, and we want to share in your sorrow by recognizing that the Lord has accepted into his presence a good and faithful servant. Let the memories of the good time spent with Sister McVeigh be kept alive in your heart. We offer our sincere condolences and assistance to the family. Lovingly submitted, the members of the St. Timothy Community Church Department, Sunday School Department, Sister Shirley Moorhead, Superintendent, Sister Carol Holcomb, Assistant Superintendent, Reverend Dr. Ramin Jackson, Senior Pastor, and Reverend William Curran, Youth Pastor. Be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church's archives. Thank you. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. St. John chapter 11, 25th, 26 verses. To the family of our beloved member, Fanny McVeigh, whereas our Lord and Savior has called Fanny McVeigh from labor to reward. We, the pastor, officers, and members of St. Timothy Community Church, extend our deepest sympathy to you in your time of sorrow. As you mourn the passing of your dear loved one, we commend to you our Heavenly Father for a comforter. One of the most beautiful truths of our faith is that life does not end at death. We believe that life is changed, not taken away. In faith, we know that those who have died remain with us in love and in the communion of saints. In hope, we look forward lovingly to the day when we will reunite with them for all eternity. Be it resolved that Fannie McVeigh has laid down her cross and received her crown. She is now safe in his arms. To the entire family, we say to you, trust in the Lord. Look to him for guidance and strength, and he will carry you through. Done by the order of St. Timothy Community Church, on this 15th day of May, Reverend Dr. Ramin M. Jackson, Senior Pastor, Board of Trustees, and the entire congregation of St. Timothy Community Church. 
The family of the late Fannie McVeigh wishes to acknowledge and thank everyone for your prayers, acts of kindness, expressions of love and support, cards, flowers, phone calls, and your presence here today. May God bless you abundantly for the blessings you have been to us. Pastor Jackson. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to move towards um, the obituary that's in your uh, program. And as um, our Minister of Music, Dr. Mack, plays very softly, I'm just going to take a moment and just um, read what's been printed. And I always say this in gatherings as such. When, when a person has lived a long life here on earth, and has accomplished so much, it's hard to put everything that they have done and said and experienced on a document. But the family gets together and does the best they can to do a summary to pull some important things uh, to share and to make sure it's recorded and printed of their loved one's life. So just take a moment and let's uh, read and then also look at the pictures as well that would also exhibit her personality and exhibit her, uh, her love and, uh, and expressions as well. And I think that's important to look at as the family has taken time to select certain portraits to be able to share in order to capture 89 years life. Reflections and tributes from family and friends. This is an opportunity as um, we share and hear from one another, those that, des that desire to. Um, the family is asking that we keep our remarks or our tributes um, two minutes or less so that we can accommodate um, all those who wish and desire to, um, to speak. And so what I would ask is um, if anyone that has um, any tributes to come up to my right, 
your left. There's a podium here, and you can certainly uh, share. And after um, some moments have gone by, and I feel that we're, we're ready to move on, I'll stand up to, to the pulpit to move our service uh, forward. Uh, so family, friends, this will be a good opportunity uh, to share your reflections and your tributes. family, friends. I think it would be a little better if I take my mask off. I just want everyone to know, and you probably already know, how much I love my mother. I thank God for my mother. My mother was my rock, my strength. She was a pillar of strength for me, for my children, my grandchildren, and everyone who came in contact with her has always said, your mom is really great. Your mom is this. She's encouraging. She's loving. She's a pillar of strength, and I will miss her forever for that. She told me when... I was born, she was 18, and that's when she looked in my face the day I was born and she said, that's the day that I knew that I wasn't enough to keep you alive, to keep you here, to take care of you. My father was only 21 and they were married young and she said, and I knew about God, I knew about God of heaven but I didn't know about the deity of God. I thought I had to be perfect. I had to be uh, something and someone that God approved of, she said. But in that moment when I looked in your little innocent eyes, I knew I wasn't enough. My parents, her parents weren't enough. I knew I needed Jesus. And she said that was the day that she decided to give her life to Jesus Christ and live her life. Give me over to Jesus Christ as an 18-year-old child. She was strong. She was determined, as you might have read in the obituary. She had a very strong will. I remember when we first moved to Gary in early 1960. She found a job. She wanted to uh, work in the nursing field. She had already started, so she found a job in Chicago at a hospital on the west side, Presbyterian St. Luke's Hospital. She hadn't gotten her driver's license. In fact, she barely knew how to drive, but she was determined to get there. And she did. She drove, she may have had a learner's permit, but she was determined to get there, she did. And that was pretty much the story of her life. She never let anything, anything hold her back. And I always felt that if mom said I could do it, I could do it. She has always been the person I looked to, my friend. When I needed some advice, I'd call her. She never judged or anything. She just said, well, baby, it's gonna be all right. You can do it. And I believed her. She had a great sense of humor. Just a couple of months before she passed away, 
she told me, she says, you know, I just realized, she says, I keep forgetting you're 70. You're 70 years old. And I said, yeah, I, I'm 70. She says, because you know, if I'm 88 and I had you when I was 18, you must be 70. I said, yes, I am. She says, because you know, I, I was wondering, why is it you keep walking around here all bent over? <laughs> so, but yes, she could bring a smile to your face no matter what the situation was, and I loved her for that too. And I'm gonna miss her tremendously. But you know, I look around and I see every see people that she and talk to people that she's known and who have benefit from a relationship with her and that keeps her alive it keeps her as i look around i see different things she was great at decorating and just putting things together she was just a beautiful person to me my mom i know is resting in the arms of jesus christ and she'll be there forever. Amen. Pray for me. Good morning. I'm Lily Joyner, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Sunday School uh, Department at St. Timothy Community Church. I knew Fanny for a long, long time, well, ever since we uh, were here at church together. But I can truly say Fanny was a believer, and when I talked to her, we always had conversations about the Lord. We would have prayer together, and we would read scriptures together. And uh, uh, during the time when I was going through with my husband and my son illness, she would often call and she would tell me, say, Lily, say, you know God is good. Say, you just hold on. And I'd say to her, I said, Fanny, Fanny me and Jesus are longtime friends, and I just believe the Lord is going to take me through. And right after that time she was going through a challenge with her family and she would call and confide in me about different things and we would still go back to the same ritual just having prayer together and reading scriptures and we would just talk about the word of god and sometimes she would begin to uh, quote a scripture and i would finish the scripture out and you know how fanny you knew Fanny, you knew how she laughed, and she would just get tickled. She'd say, ain't that the truth, Lily? <laughs> but we had great times together, and I can truly say that uh, she'll be missed. I often talked to her after she had moved away uh, from here and kept her uh, in tune with things that was going on, on at church and uh, giving her the uh, numbers to call in for different services when there were funerals or whatever, if she uh, had the time to uh, take them in. But I truly thank God for the life that she lived, and she'll be missed among us greatly. And other than being a member of the Sunday School, Fanny and I shared the same birthday month. So we had a lot in common. We were always together in different uh, meetings and uh, activities at church. But God is good. And he has the last word, and he has spoken. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. I will be reading three tributes from Grandma, who I consider to be my beloved grandmother, from three of her granddaughters, Alyssa, Leslie, and Rhonda. From Lisa, for my grandma, I called you mama because you took care of me when I was young and when I got older. I called you mama because you loved me like one. I called you mama because you were selfless in your care of others. You loved your family so much. I called you mama because you were the matriarch of the family. Mama, may you rest in peace and I enjoy, enjoy your afterlife like you enjoyed your life on earth. This is from Leslie. Grandma Fanny instilled morals and values in me. She taught me to be humble, thankful, love and respect myself, have goal-oriented mindset to improve my life by setting goals in life and attaining them. Grandma played a sufficient role in my life where it made me the person I am today. She took on the role of mother that was well beyond that of grandma. I remember years ago when I was in my teens, grandma would get upset fussing at us. I would discreetly laugh and mimic her because it was funny. When I got older, I would do a reenactment mocking her and asking her if she remembered when you said this or that. She would not admit that she remember, remember those days, but she laughed at me while I was pretending to fuss. We both knew she remembered those days and that just made it even funnier. Thank you, Grandma. You will be in my, for, my heart forever. Love, Leslie. And from Rhonda. Grandma Fanny, words can't express how much we love and miss you. It's still unbelievable. We always think we have forever to show our loved ones how much we love them. I thank God every day that you and I were able to talk and share our love. Your last words to me was you loved me and you felt that I had become an amazing mom and you were proud of me and you were proud of my children and I. That will always stay in my head and up uplift me through these hard times. I remember coming over your house with the kids and we would have an amazing time. I would tell the kids when they were younger, don't touch that and don't, don't say that. You would say, leave them alone, leave those babies alone. We would eat good, laugh and talk. You always treated me like your granddaughter. What's amazing is that you were always down to earth and you never judged. Grandma Fanny, I miss you and I thank you for all your love and wisdom. To my family, I'm so sorry we have to go through this, but I am praying. I am praying for all of us. Sorry we couldn't make it, but we love you with our deepest sympathies, the Finley and Carruther family. Well, over the uh, past few days, I've been trying to think of what I wanted to say, and um, it was just so many things I wanted to say, but I do want to say she was truly my mom. When my uh, grandmother passed, I knew I had a, a second mom, and um, she and I had a, had a relationship that I, I didn't call her my mother-in-law, I called her mom. She, uh, from the first time that we met, 
and she accepted me into the family. And uh, every time we would come back to Indiana and she knew we uh, were coming, she had every single thing that we wanted to eat, drink. She just laid out everything for us. And when she decided to come and live with us, um, Ann and I talked about it and I said right away, sure, you know, it's no question. And um, she definitely was a strong lady, um, like everyone said, in a kind heart. Um, I'll definitely truly miss her um, when uh, <clears throat> we uh, go home, you know, pass by her room and just think about her every single day. She, she accepted me and she didn't have to. And uh, a lot of times she would say she, she didn't want to be a burden on us or change our lifestyle by being there. And I just said to her, you know, you deserve it, mom, you know. Uh, it wouldn't, we wouldn't have it any other way. And uh, so I just wanted to say those couple things and I loved her too. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. I just wanted to pay my respects to Miss Fanny and to the family and the members here of uh, St. Timothy Church, my sister Carla, um, who's, uh, she's married to Michael, uh, Miss Fanny's son. Hello, Ann, everyone. Uh, Miss Fanny is Leo. I'm Leo. All the August people already know what that means. And she really, really did have a sense of humor. And we had a report from when we met. And I didn't know about August the 15th and August the 10th and all of that. But she kind of saw me and my heart and we clicked. We clicked on faith, we clicked on food, we clicked on just having a regular conversation. She would, I would call her while I was in London because I live in London and just have a conversation, just call her before she moved from Gary and we talked for quite a long time. I remember she gave me this one birthday card for one of my birthdays, which I still have to this day. As a matter of fact, it's framed. And I was like, how did this woman find this card? How did she even know this about me? It really, really, spoke to me and it actually keeps me to this day. So yes, yeah, she's touched many, many lives and will continue to touch many lives. I remember having a conversation with her at the house and Gary, me and my mom was there and my sister and we were just joking and her, her sister was there as well at the time. And it, it just, I just want to give my respect and say, rest in peace, Miss Fanny. I will never forget you and I will keep that card for forever to keep me through ups and downs. And God bless everyone. Thank you. Would there be anyone else to pay a tribute or reflection before we move on to the music ministry? Uh, we thank all who have shared. We'll now have our music ministry to come and to sing uh, God Is by uh, Moses Steele will lead us in that. And I'll come back with the, uh, some words of uh, comfort to our family and friends.
joy in the time of sorrow Adi. my all in all My today and my tomorrow, oh yes he is, oh he is, my hope in all. The strength of my life, he moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in his fold. I've got to keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never turn back. Go!
Let me take this moment to first to give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and certainly to this family. We want to certainly acknowledge um, Sister McVeigh's daughter, Ann, that spoke, and her son, Willie, and, and her sister, Shirley, and all the grandchildren and all those who are present, uh, we just want you to know that on behalf of St. Timothy Community Church, we certainly, our prayers uh, continue to be with you and your family. We know that uh, death is never an easy uh, thing to cope with or deal with, but we know that um, the Lord giveth according to scripture and the Lord taketh away scripture tells us to bless to bless the Lord and so we bless God for certainly um, her life and each of you have experienced her life in your own way and you hold on to those memories and those times in which you shared uh, with her and all of us have certainly have been through this experience of losing a loved one uh, and, and it never uh, it seems like the, the 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 moment in which we we share with our loved one uh, we gravitate to those experiences and those times in which we share with them and then when they're gone it seems like there's a space or something that's missing around the family gatherings or around the family table. But I've learned over the years to remember those that were very close to me, that I love dearly by mentioning their names or doing something that really um, pays tribute and remembers their legacy and who they were. As I was taking a look and a glance through the obituary, as I stated to you before, that um, this document cannot hold 88 years and eight months. She was four months shy to being 89. This document cannot capture everything and that's why it's important for family and, and friends to share about reflections and about what you experienced with your loved one. Being the new pastor here for now my third year, her name was certainly mentioned. And even of her passing, many of the members spoke very highly of her. And I say that because that's important, because there are some folks who die that folks don't say anything about. But there are people who have contributed their time and energy and their service, if you will, and, and, uh, and their monetary contributions to the church. And she was certainly one that had given over 40 years of service to this church. And that doesn't go unnoticed, not by myself or the close to 600 members that we have here in St. Timothy uh, Community Church. Members like her that have given their time and, and I haven't heard anyone say anything about her looking for an award or a pat on the back recognize her name. You know, there are people like that in the church. If you don't say their name, oh Lord, you don't put them in the bulletin or acknowledge them. They certainly have a, a great tiff. But with her, I didn't hear anything about her wanting any kind of recognition of any sort. And that's what a true servant of the Lord is. 
that you serve the church, you serve God, not looking for your reward from men. Now, it's nice for folk to say nice things about you, but the point is you don't look for it. You just do it. And you do it because you're not looking at people watching you. Some folk wait till the spotlight come on, and then they want to say stuff and do things. But there are folks like ourselves that like to work behind the scenes and get things done. So we appreciate that. So now that she has transitioned, I won't say we lost her, because something you lost means you can't find it. So she's not a lost soul, but she's a soul that has transitioned. And there is certainly uh, a difference in that. And we who are believers, we who believe in the word of God, according to our faith, we believe that God gives us, God creates, as he creates humanity, creates the world, but nothing stays for eternity unless it's in Christ. Everything has to expire. Everything has a end date. And that's where most theologians look at this word that's called eschatology, which is a study of things and how things end one questions what happens after this. We who believe have an understanding according to our faith in the word of God that it's God that gives us life. He breathes, us, breathes his breath in us, his spirit in us, the pneuma, the ruach of God that gives us life, gives us the essence of being. But then God comes back and what he deposits, he comes for. And so as she was born, she also had to die or transition. As I took a glimpse of the obituary, there are some things, as you have also read, that really stuck with me in these few moments as we have gathered. One is that her faith did not happen at age 88, but her faith happened or came into being at an early age. And I would submit to us that it is because of life and how life presents itself, it forces us to pull on our faith in God. When things are going well and things are, seem to be fine, we don't really pull on our faith as much, but when tragedy or when turmoil or when tribulation happens, it causes the believer to pull on one's faith. And the question then is, where does our faith then come from? Who deposits faith in us? As we have read, Obituary indicated that her faith came from her mother. And the point I'm making to us is that, that even as children have learned behaviors based on what they have seen or learned or been taught, it starts at an early age. Many of you, many of us can probably testify to this. I know I can that my faith didn't happen for me at 43, but my faith was instilled in me by watching grandma, watching my grandfather, watching my mom and father, and, and 
big mama and big daddy. We all got a big mama or big daddy. But watching how their faith in God had helped them to overcome many things in their life. So because faith was taught, then faith which is taught and then has to be experienced. And our faith is never stretched or experienced until we then take what we have learned or been taught and it's then put into action. And so her faith led her through building and developing a family and going to school for education and learning in the health field. And her faith helped her to raise her children. Her faith helped her to be a part of this ministry for 40 years and to develop what her mother had instilled in her at a young age. That's what church ought to do. Church ought to build you up, not tear you down. Her faith goes beyond that because then she realized her passion. And so from her faith, she recognized her passion. Her passion for gardening, flowers, and, and vegetables. Now, I wish I was around that time because I'm kind of one of those members that would call her up and go over and say, can I get some cap? <laughs> what about some collard greens? And so I'm sure many of you have uh, experienced something from the garden. But what struck me is the correlation that she had between her gardening and the word of God. Because in the obituary indicated her favorite verse, Matthew chapter 13. Let me just walk through the text very quickly to comfort us all about this garden. Because Jesus begins to connect with his disciples and the multitude that have been following him. They've been following Jesus because Jesus had been doing some prior miracles. And folks that saw him and witnessed what he couldn't do wanted to, were influenced by it and wanted to be around him. So Jesus finds himself in a spotlight in which he did not want to be in. So he runs quickly or moves quickly onto this boat away from the crowd, but yet close enough that the crowd can see and hear him. And the one thing I like about Jesus is that when he preaches or teaches or explains something, there's always a meaning behind it. So he's on this boat, and he's facing the crowd. And as the crowd then faces him, he takes an opportunity to speak another one of his parables. And a parable is simply a story, a story that, had, that is told from the earth, but has a heavenly meaning or a spiritual meaning, if you will. Jesus takes time to talk or speak parables or stories that would develop the faith of those who were listening and watching him. And so in this chapter of Matthew, Jesus speaks the parable of the sower. And he talks about how the, um, there is an importance of one to sow into the ground. Jesus takes the time and he explains to the sower that he says there's a sower that, that takes some seeds and he throws the seeds and he says that some of these seeds that were thrown by the sower into the ground, some fell by the wayside. Those seeds that fell by the wayside, Jesus explained that they were eaten up by the birds, the flowers. 
those creatures that flew in the air would come and eat up those seeds. Why? Because it didn't take root in ground. Then he talks about there are some seeds that, that fell on stony places. And actually they grew, but, but, but when the sun came out, the sun dried them up. Jesus says to them there are some seeds that fell amongst the thorns and when they began to grow they sprung up but those thorns choked the very life that was coming from the seed. But then Jesus gave some hope. He said they, then what there were some seeds that the sower sowed into the earth that actually made it into some good ground. And those that made it, those seeds that were planted into the good ground took root. The Bible says, Jesus says to the multitude, the crowd, that those seeds began to grow. And from the growth, they began to produce fruit. And the lesson in the parable that Jesus is saying to his beloved is that when seeds make it or are sown into good ground, they come of something. They produce something. Well, Sister McVeigh understood the concept, the theological concept of that as she planted in her garden to make sure that those seeds were rooted into some good ground so we can have the collard greens and the cabbage and the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts, which is not my favorite. <laughs> and the green beans and the peas and the cauliflower and the spinach and the list can go on. But someone had to make sure that in order to receive the, what was produced had to be put in some good ground. That's the sower. And how does that relate to us as humanity is that we have a God who's like the sower. And as we were created as humanity, the Bible says in the book of Genesis that he spoke into existence creation. But humanity, he, he pulled from the ground, from the dust of the ground, and he blew in man the breath of life, Holy Spirit. And man, the Bible says, became a living soul. That spirit that came from God is the seed. The seed that God puts in us and God allowed his breath, his, his pneuma, his ruach to be in Sister McFay for 88 plus years. 88 years and some months. And because of God being the sower and was able to sow in her, she produced something. Look at her life. You, you're witnesses of it. She produced a family that she loved and cherished. She, she produced her service into this community and service into this church that flowed into the community. She produced love friendships with many that were in the church and on the job and in the community. Her, her passion for health care was able to be shown by how she, uh, how she went about serving others and relating to even her family. That's because from the very beginning of time, the sower, God, made sure that she was put in some good ground. 
And so like anything, after it grows, it has to be plugged. And so God comes into his, his garden, his earth, in which he has created. And he, the sower, begins to pluck, root up. The very individuals in which he feels is ready to come back home to him. And that's what we have experienced, family and friends. A garden in which God has created and God has allowed us to be in, but yet he who is the sower came back on April 18th and said, it's time for me to pluck my flower and bring it back unto me. And so as we gather to pay tribute of the seed that the soul that was planted in this earth for 88 years, we thank God because God had allowed you as family and friends to witness the fruit, to witness what God had created and what God had used on this earth to be a blessing to each and every one of you. And so how do we move from here? How do we go from here? How do we move on? We hold on to what she left you. We hold on to the fruit, if you will, the fruit of love, the fruit of passion, the fruit of the many experiences that you have shared with her. As I've heard, the, the humor, her and I would have got along just well. Those are fruit that, that was left behind for now for you as the family to receive, to hold on to, to add to your life. Because one day the sower's going to come back again to the garden and look over the garden. And God is going to look at see who's next to be plucked who's next to be pulled from the garden. And the question is, are we ready? Have we developed our faith in God enough to be ready when he comes? Have we committed our lives to him enough to accept him as Lord and Savior of our, over our lives and in our lives? to say that when our time is up, he can come to the garden and we can say we're ready. And he'll say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. And so we'll say, Sister McVeigh, we know where you are. Save some space up there for us. Help the heavenly garden now, so when we get up there, we can see the beauty that heaven provides. So we won't say goodbye, but we'll say we'll see you in the morning. Let us bow our heads in prayer as we begin to close this memorial service of remembrance of one who has been a great asset, contributor to God's house and to our lives. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for 
this hour that we have come together to share because this moment helps us in the reflections that were shared, in the songs that were sung, in the music that was played, scripture that was read, and certainly the comforting words that you have given unto me to share. All of this helps in comforting each loved one today to know that Sister McVeigh's life did not go in vain, for her life will be cherished forever. And now, as we begin to transition ourselves from this sanctuary, this sacred place, as we begin to leave and go about our day, we remember, we hold on to the truths of the word of God through our faith in you. That one of these old mornings, soon and very soon, by and by, we will see her and other loved ones again. To complete the family circle and to rest forever in your care. That's the comfort that we have that's the belief and faith that we have in knowing that you are God. So now as we leave this place ever from your sight, guide us and protect us. Let your spirit of comfort rest, rule, and abide in our hearts and minds forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. As our minister of music plays a selection, uh, we will recess out, um, the clergy, and then followed by um, family, and then we ask others to follow behind the family. Again, we, we thank God for her life, and we ask that you would continue to be strong in the Lord, and know that God has you. You may have times where you may Think about her memory and you may cry, and it's okay to cry. I don't let anyone tell you don't cry. That's part of the grieving process. But it's also good to rejoice and think about the good times as well. God bless you, family. May heaven smile upon you.
soon and very soon we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we're going to see the king Mm-hmm. <laughs>